Hi, techno fans. I'm Randomer. I make techno and other genres, but most people know me for my techno, I guess. Um, and I was going to do a little demonstration today about one way in which I make kick drums, because everyone knows techno needs kick drums. Um, and a lot of people ask me when they come to me, like wrecked at gigs, um, how, do you, how do you make your kick drums? <laughs> and usually I don't tell them because I don't want, I don't want anyone to know, but today you're in for a treat. <laughs> so um, this one in particular, usually I have a kind of similar process every time. Um, sometimes I use just a sample, but mostly like I like to do this and then I'll collect up some kick drums I've made and use like five for the year or something. But in this, on this case, um, I used a sample from, I went on YouTube um, just like three years ago or something and was listening to like watching a load of um, trailers for Video Nasties films from the 80s because I kind of like, like the sound of VHS and I went through all these trailers and just like cut out some hits and some things that I like the sound of. Um, and basically I used one of these samples because it's quite close to just noise. And I found that um, the sort of kick that I like to make is best, is best when you start with something that's close to noise as a sound source, because then you can filter it and kind of control exactly how it's sounding and kind of put your own sound onto it. So the sample I started with was, was this, which is obviously sounds pretty crappy. But I'm going to put it into contact. Um, just put it on the channel there. And then just test. OK, so that's only a bit percussive already. Um, and then what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll look in the sound on like a, a spectrum analyzer, which is what I use. Um, I use this one. Kind of look at, look at kind of the, what's in the spectrum of the sound to kind of decide what I can do with it. So this one you can kind of see got quite a lot from 80 hertz up to like 20K. Um, so the first thing I'd probably do to make that into a kick would be pitch it down. So I'm going to go to the tune there and then put it down to the minus 12 semitones. And you can hear that kind of noise thing there, which is really useful for when you kind of distort and make it louder and filter it and stuff, because it gives you all that kind of sound to work with. And the fact that it's not just like white noise, it's like noise that's been taken from like kind of lo-fi VHS um, recording means that it's got like quite a lot of character already to it. Um, so after doing that, um, when you drag like the file from Ableton, just for the people that don't know, um, into contact like that, it immediately like maps the sample out onto the onto the keyboard there, so you can kind of play your melody and like that. Um, and then the next thing I'll do is look at the start of the sample and try and find the the right place to start it, because you can see here if I zoom in, um, the start point is there and it's kind of like a bit of a bump there, bumpy sound there, so I'm going to just put it to the start of that to make that more pronounced. This is all probably pretty basic things for some people, but other people might not be. So now it's already sounding a bit more like a kick. Um, uh, the next thing I'll do is make it really loud, and I'd like to do that with limiters. So I hope this doesn't wreck the speakers here. <coughs> Yeah, that sounded a bit nicer. Um, and now, now it's sounding really noisy, in fact. And you can see it's kind of like even, there's a lot more to work with on the spectrum there. Um, so the next thing I'll do is filter it, which is the main, the main way that I think a lot of kick drums are made is, is through filtering, through taking something like, and then taking away, and kind of the shape of the filter and how it changes over time will, will define like how the kick drum sounds. So um, I'm going to use this filter. Um, and here, there, it's kind of like, it's a low-pass filter, so it, everything above the cut-off point is being uh, taken away from the sound. Put it further down. And so now it's just kind of like a rumble. And to make, to make it sound more like a kick, what I'll do is I'll add like a, what's called a modulation envelope, which means it's going to take this cut-off frequency and it's going to take it from the top, or where, wherever I specify, and kind of like, Go like that. So you can see when I do that, it kind of sounds like a kick drum. Um, but I don't want to do that every time with my finger. <laughs> with my finger. So I'm going to put an envelope on here on the modulation section. 
add modulator and go to envelopes, ADSR, that's just the type of envelope it is. And if you go down on here, you can control um, how this envelope changes over time. And I'm going to make it fairly short decay because I just want the kind of click from that noise for the start of the kick drum. Uh, that's sounding nice. Um, but I'm going to take that down a bit because I don't like high frequencies that much. So now it's sounding a bit like a bit like someone like throwing a massive bowling ball down the alley. I kind of always like that sound for a kick drum. In fact, when I when I like came up with this method, I was thinking about this kick that another producer had used, and it sounded to me like someone like throwing a bowling ball. So I put that sound into my head, and I, I, I thought to myself like, what what makes up that sound? And I realised it's kind of like white noise, but being filtered, and the filter is going down. So then. After that, I kind of decided that I'd make all my kicks like that. I would kind of get like a noise source and then make it make that kind of like bowling ball sound. <coughs> all right, then after that, um, I, went, I would go on to this uh, kind of like modulation section here. Um, this is for the volume of the, the sound in general. And kind of like, it's just a bit too muddy there. So I'm going to take the sustain down here, add the decay a bit, and it should sound a bit tighter now because the kind of volume over time has been flattened out a bit. That's a bit nicer now. And also I take the release down. Usually I have the release like shorter than the, the decay. And the reason I do that is so that if I'm in the project um, and I'm putting in kick drums, then I want to have, want to be able to have kick drums that are quite short sounding. So if you have the release really short, then if I just like, Press the, press the kick drum uh, on like quite a short note and you can kind of get that, which is useful for like adding kind of like, you know, little blippy ones and then hold it down for the really heavy one. <clears throat> and the next thing I'm going to do is add another limiter. <laughs> because um, when you like filter out sounds, obviously you're going to lose like quite a bit of volume. So because I've taken so much out of this sound, I'm kind of like, want it to still sound quite loud so I'll put another limiter on just to bring the level up again make it sound super heavy does that sound any different was it what well <laughs> I'm kind of confused about that but all right <laughs> yeah yeah it's Slightly louder. <laughs> All right. Um, so, like this on its own is not really enough because it's, you know, it's kind of nice, but it kind of lacks. It doesn't. It's too. I don't know. It just needs another layer. And a lot of producers usually like will add another sound at this point, but I kind of like as like a fun challenge to myself, and also just because I think it, it means that if you have less sound, less, less different sound sources, you have less chance of things like overlapping in bad ways and phasing. I'll often like try and make everything from the same sound. So for the, like, the higher part of the kick drum, I'm going to use the groups function in contact, which you can use. Pretty, well, this is a pretty good way of layering up stuff, <coughs> particularly drums. And you can put different effects on, like so if I duplicate this group, with the same sample, I can use the same sample, but like at a different pitch with different effects on that kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, okay, so now I've got two groups, but um, they will have the same effects on and that kind of stuff. And I just disable this edit all groups thing here. Excuse me. Uh, so now I've kind of got two groups and I can edit them separately. So I'm going to solo this one and take off the effects that I had and then work again to try and make um, a different kind of sound to combine with that previous one. I'm going to put the pitch up again because with it, with that sample here being low, kind of doesn't have, obviously we low passed it, but it didn't have that much information up there and it's kind of like a bit too lo-fi with the, the minus 12 semitone pitch thing. So now we're back to this kind of sound and usually I like when I'm layering up sounds often I do them at different pitches so you can kind of get quite a lot out of the same sample. Uh, I'm going to use another filter here, um, bandpass filter this time because it's just 
just like neaten up the sound a little bit. It's also made it quite quiet. And then add, this time I might, I don't think I'll use a limiter, I'm gonna use a saturator, which is pretty good in contact, it's got a really nice sound to it. So I'm gonna put that like to 100% to kind of, because obviously when we uh, did that band passing, you know, the sound like, it's really quiet. So I'm gonna do that. Now it's got a real like nice knock to it. Um, and I'm just gonna mess about with this ADSR here. Just put qu quite a bit of attack on there so it's not clashing too much with the start of the other sound. Um, a bit more release. Well, more decay, less release than the last sound. <laughs> All right, so now with any luck, if we combine the two sounds, it should sound pretty good. Yeah, and that's the kind of, it's basically what I would start with. And then once I've got that, I'd kind of like go into my MIDI track. And often I like to play these kicks at different pitches. So I might start with that one there and then have one down there. So something like that. Um, and if we loop that in Ableton, I would usually do a little bit of further processing. So I put the saturator on and some EQ. Um, and then I'd probably like put it into satin, which I like to use, which is kind of like a tape emulation. And as you can see here, if we look at the kick drum, it's kind of, it's got bass in it, but it doesn't have like a particularly like really pronounced sub because it, it's, just, it's just noise down there. So to kind of make it more tonal, I'll add an EQ like this one, kind of like a really steep EQ up there of whatever frequency I want to bring out. You can't hear it so well on these speakers, but you can kind of like tell there's, you can see on the, the analyzer, there's kind of like a proper sub note there. Um, and I actually used this, this basic this technique to do a kick in a track I made recently, which is coming out on Deck Mantle on a compilation. I'm, I wasn't that wasn't a marketing thing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's come out like that. Um, and in that track, I kind of like was messing about with the idea of like there being some short kicks and then some like larger ones. So it's kind of like got these two kind of short high pitch kicks and then those low ones you heard before which sound really heavy and then these kind of like tiny other ones and these ones have kind of like moved in time a bit and, and just like brought the velocity down to kind of make it more musical. It's almost like making like an in, what you do with like an entire drum kit just with one kick. So I would have that. And then for that track, actually, I um, used some other sounds from the, the video nasties thing. So I had this as kind of like a really nasty sounding hi-hat. And that was like a snare. They're also both really noisy, but characterful sounds. And I put those into contact as well. Um, I'll just show you quickly the processing on that. So for that, I just like added them to because I want to use both samples there, instead of dragging them in and having them come over the whole keyboard, I just put them on C3 and C sharp 3, and then added some saturation. And actually the convolution reverb is really useful for if you have those kind of like really lo-fi sounds, you want to make them sound a bit more like kind of professional and sheen, you just add some reverb and kind of like pull the decay down a bit. So once I'd kind of chuck those hits in it. That's kind of how the drum beat ended up sounding. Well, that's about it, so I hope that was useful and informative. <laughs>